stop avoiding the worst case scenario and fears that you're going to actually manifest it. And if you do happen to manifest it, kind of like I did, you're going to become so much more powerful. You're going to realize you can't be f***ed with. Once your fears have come true and you figured out how to work through it and you realize that you still have what it takes, you're still alive, you're going to be okay. Like, wow, that is a powerful, powerful place to be. Welcome to the Introverted Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Erica Van Slyke. My soul's mission on this planet is to help fellow introverts grow their online influence in a state of feminine flow and ease. While battling the woes of depression, anxiety, and even mom guilt, I've somehow managed to build a six-figure blog without the use of social media and without sacrificing my mental health. If I can do it, you can too. Well, hello there, my beautiful, beautiful souls out there who are probably wondering what the hell happened to this bitch? Did she fall off a cliff? Did she drown? No, (laughs) I basically had to take on some supplemental work. I didn't have to, but I chose to. Someone who I admire greatly, major boss babe approached me and wanted me to help her with her digital marketing and her website. So I'm doing the blog and I decided to also add this as some supplemental income by helping her with her marketing because that was originally my background before I became a blogger. And I told myself that I wasn't going to let the podcast fall off, but I got so consumed with the initial setup of her website. And and basically too, I'm just at a different phase right now in my life where both of my boys are in sports. And so I've just had a hard time juggling my, my schedule. <laughs> so I didn't mean to ghost you for months at a time, but It is what it is. I had to do what I had to do to get by and I am here and I am thriving. Although I could have considered the fact that I had to take on supplemental income from doing my basically original work as an SEO specialist. I could have taken that and said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me because two years ago, when a thriving business of mine, I've been doing this for nearly a decade, blogging, making a great living at it. And I I got hit really hard by a Pinterest algorithm update and lost 40% of my business. And it was shortly after I started this podcast and purchased a beautiful lakefront home. So it wasn't great timing. But at the time, in my subconscious, um, just stepping into the role of a leader for entrepreneurs, creatives that want to make a living, doing what they're passionate about, and also taking on like a hefty mortgage and trusting my business to carry that weight. The loop was, oh my God, what if the rug is pulled out from under me? What if all my success from my blog is taken away and I have to get a job again, working for someone else. That was my biggest fear because I just have such horrible memories of working for, well, I don't want to say my bosses were horrible. It just, it wasn't ever aligned for me. We'll just put it that way. So I, I guess the last time I recorded an episode, I had fought through that major scary loss, uh, Pinterest loss, and I had built my business back up using mainly SEO tactics. And at the time I had rebuilt the business and it was even better than before. I had my, I think it was my first ever 12K month in September of 2023. And then this boss babe friend of mine approached me like right after I knew I had made the best month I've ever had in my nine years of vlogging, she approaches me and she's like, would you please help me with my business? I need your SEO prowess. I just need you to consult me on this. And I'm like, is this a test from the universe? Should I be doing this? But at the time, I think I'd been through so much trauma from losing such a large chunk of my income that I, I was like, no, I need to take this on to really 
heal my nervous system and just get myself resourced again to not be just like in fight or flight. And although my business had recovered greatly, I'm aware of all of these damn crazy ass changes going on right now in the industry of blogging, of digital publishing. AI has changed. I mean, just already, and we don't even know what it's actually going to do because it's still in relatively early phases, but holy shit, just in the past year, the changes that all of us um, bloggers have been experiencing, it's it's mind boggling, it's unsettling, it is scary as hell, but you know what? I've already been through this. I just got through this. <laughs> from the Pinterest algorithm update that really damaged my business. So I just have felt called because I have learned so much since I last recorded. And I know that so many of you fellow bloggers and creators are freaked out and I get it. And there was a string of recent Google algorithm updates that have decimated online publications completely. And my heart goes out to you. I mean, 40% was bad enough with the Pinterest changes two years ago, but I can't admit, I mean, some of you, I've heard you've lost up to 80% of your business from these recent Google changes. So I'm like, damn it, I've got to show up because I've been through this. And over the past two months, I've been hit not as significantly as I was with the Pinterest updates, but I I get the sense of unrest and is our industry even going to be around in a year? Like what is going on? And as soon as we catch our breath, there's more changes. And so I'm showing up, <laughs> even though I feel like I don't have a whole lot of time right now in my life because I've got, I'm still trying to find my way through all these algorithm updates with my blog, because that's still my full-time income. And then I'm taking on clients for digital marketing and SEO consulting, but I want to be here for, for you guys that need me. So I'm here and that's kind of just a little summary of what's been going on in my life. And with all that being said, I do have a message to share. I've been feeling called to share this for the past two or three months. And today was the day that I'm like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm going to be a little rusty. It's been a minute, but here we go. So any of you that are unsettled, dysregulated, experiencing panic attacks from ruminating over the worst case scenario, because for so many of us, it's it's right there in front of our faces. We can smell it. We can touch it. We can taste it almost. I want to give you some pretty, I would say it's kind of controversial in the new age law of attraction paradigm that we've all been fed. And I'm pretty sure you've heard it. If you listen to this podcast, I'm sure you you get the whole, you know, Focus your attention on what you want to happen. Don't think about what you don't want to happen, right? So we would block out the worst case scenario in fear that that's what we're going to manifest. And I did this when when my business was hit pretty hard a few years ago. I had the fear as soon as I purchased my house and stepped out as a, as a leader by creating this podcast that my business would fail. As soon as I did it, it was this superstition, so to speak. And going on that new age rhetoric of only focus on the positive, I tried my best to shift my focus and not think about those fears that were coming up of the worst case scenario. But I found myself in constant panic mode I was so dysregulated. I couldn't hardly sleep. I would wake up with my heart racing, just complete rumination. And uh, (laughs) wow, it put some years on my face. I'll tell you that. Thank God for Botox. (laughs) But nonetheless, it came to a point where I'm like, this isn't turning around. Like my business is not turning around. 
I continue to get thrown these hits. Wow, this may not work out. And at the very same time, this podcast that I follow came up with this meditation. And it was basically to go ahead and envision the worst case scenario to number one, resource yourself enough. So if you're in that heightened state where you're about to have a panic attack, no, don't go into the worst case scenario. But the idea would be to ground yourself, whether that's through a relaxing hypnosis meditation or through nature therapy, maybe even through a massage, but to get yourself regulated enough before you go into this state, which what I was listening to, it was actually a guided hypnosis to actually walk you through the worst case scenario. And so for me, the worst case scenario was me losing or having to return to like a corporate setting or to work for someone else for the rug to be pulled out from under me to where I couldn't be a creative anymore. I couldn't be my own boss and I would lose my house that I had just bought. So I worked my, I finally, like I was putting off this meditation. I was like, no, I can't, I I don't want to manifest that. So why would I even let myself go there? But I'm telling you, once I did, I showed my subconscious that My worst case scenario really wasn't that bad that I would find a way. But what what was so powerful is like in in so many ways, my worst case scenario did come true because as as someone who's so afraid to come out and be a public speaker about how they were successful in their creative business and then to publicly go through it suffering in many ways that that was already like a fear and it happened, but I'm okay. And I don't think my voice is any less helpful to someone. And yes, I did end up taking on other work to feel safe again and to get out of scarcity and this fear so that not all of my eggs were in one basket. And much to my surprise, I've really enjoyed doing work for other female entrepreneurs that are just, it maybe wouldn't work out in every case, like if this person was a bitch or micromanaged, but I feel like I have the perfect situation where I still am my own boss. I mean, this is a, this is a freelance gig and it's fun to just flex like more, a little more of my masculine side and having to get back into the business of SEO and marketing. So all this to say, stop avoiding the worst case scenario and fears that you're going to actually manifest it. And if you do happen to manifest it, kind of like I did, you're going to become so much more powerful because you're going to, you're going to realize you can't be fucked with once your fears have come true and you figured out how to work through it and you realize that you still have what it takes, you're still alive you're going to be okay. Like, wow, that is a powerful, powerful place to be. And I think since I've already been through this once (laughs) a few years ago, that's what everybody is experiencing right now. I just feel like I had to show up and I have to share this with you. So my advice, get yourself into a relaxed, grounded state before you do this. I wish that I had a meditation to share for you that was free, but this one was like a paid program that I was doing, so it it wasn't free, so I can't share it with you. But if you could get yourself relaxed enough, resourced enough, grounded enough to then walk yourself through what is that fear? What is that worst case scenario that's just been looping in your subconscious? Okay. Is that ultimately true? Is that going to manifest? How do you know it's going to? Okay. There's already signs that it is. Okay. Well, how will you work through that? How will you get through it? And there's always a solution. There always is. 
And the thing about be doing all this self-development work and learning ourselves more is that we can trust ourselves more and we can trust ourselves enough to not put ourselves back into uh, like a low self-worth kind of dynamic. So the dynamics in previous places where I'd worked, I was really a pushover and I didn't value myself enough. So I feel like I always attracted these dynamics where I was miserable at my job and it was a miserable experience. And I just thought it had to be hard and it had, you you had to struggle. And all, all of the work that I've been doing on myself, I realized that even if I actually ended up one day having to go back to a nine to five, I would have the wherewithal to be able to see red flags in an environment where it would be kind of like soul sucking. And once I actually was in kind of this worst case scenario situation, which it it ended up not being, I realized like how black and white my thinking was anyhow. It was like this all or nothing, like your business excels and you never work for anyone again and you're just on top of the world, everything's great. Or the other extreme is you have to go back to a nine to five where you would rather like just, I don't know, be in prison because it feels like prison kind of vibe. But it's really not all black or white. It's really not that extreme. And so as long as we can trust ourselves to work through that worst case scenario, as long as we can trust ourselves to put ourselves in higher self-worth patterns, everything is going to work out. It will. Trust yourself. Trust your ability to move through challenges and know that even if it If what you didn't want to happen does happen to you, it's because it's meant to, because it's going to make you more of a badass. It really will. I feel like just unfuckwithable. And that's such a powerful place to be. You know, there's a quote that says, there are no failures in life. There's only lessons. And I'm telling you what, I have learned so much, not only about myself over these past few years, but I've had to learn so much more about business as well. And even though I'm not, I, like I said, I was hit with the recent algorithm changes that Google made. I'm like in this place where I'm not going back to that panicked, scared little girl, <laughs> that was just a few years ago. It's, I really now trust my ability to get through this. I'll figure out a way. And it's not, the blog now is not this end all be all. And that's actually a very freeing place to be as well. I not only trust myself not to work through scary, hard situations in business, but I do in life. And I know there's always a way. So I want you to please take this message with you and apply it to your own, to your own self. Please internalize it because I'm not special. You can do this too. And maybe this is your opportunity to show yourself what you're made of. Think of it like that. So I love you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I've got a lot of lessons that I want to share with you. So I hope that you will start to kind of watch out for these episodes as they come out. And it would mean so much to me if you could share this with a friend, share it on social media. I love it when I get reviews. That's that does so much good for this podcast. And it would be great. Also, if you could screenshot this episode and then upload it to your stories and tag me in it, that would make my freaking day. And I want to know what are you dealing with right now? What is your, what is your worst case scenario? I love you. You've got this and I'll talk to you again soon.